the Air Change Group would like to present The Art of the Chart, Part 1 A Guide to the Psychrometric Chart and How It Makes the Invisible Visible Some HVAC engineers may find the psychrometric chart to be a bit daunting or confusing, or maybe they have a good understanding of it but see it as a non-essential tool. Well, in this video we hope to show you that it is in fact none of these, and that it is actually very handy when trying to understand temperature and humidity during HVAC processes. Oh yeah! You see, heat load calculator outputs are very useful, but by themselves they don't allow you to visualise a HVAC process and what is happening to the air. And as we will explain later in this video, understanding the process in some situations is vital. So let's get to it and learn the psychrometric chart. Yee-haw! The psychrometric chart is sort of like a treasure map. And in order to get our HVAC bearings, we need a compass. Except this compass is a bit different. It has humidifying in place of north, heating in place of east, dehumidifying in place of south, and cooling in place of west. And so with this, we can immediately tell what HVAC processes are needed to get from one point to the proverbial X marks the spot. In this case, we see a journey or process that is both humidifying and heating. But now let's get into the nitty gritty a bit more. We need to understand the lines on the chart and what they represent. We won't go over all of them in this video, instead we'll just go over some of the more fundamental ones. The blue lines here represent dry bulb temperature. Dry bulb temperature is the temperature that you would read on a normal thermometer. These orange lines represent wet bulb temperature. Wet bulb temperature is the temperature you would read on a thermometer that is wrapped in a wet cloth and with air blowing over it. Any difference between the dry bulb and wet bulb readings is caused by the cooling effect of evaporation on the wet bulb thermometer. The purple lines represent relative humidity. Relative humidity is the percentage of moisture the air is holding relative to the maximum amount it could hold at a given dry bulb temperature. So for example, 50% relative humidity means that the air is currently holding half the moisture it could potentially hold at the current temperature. And finally, these green lines represent moisture content or humidity ratio. Humidity ratio is the ratio between the mass of the water vapour in the air to the mass of the dry air. So for example, a humidity ratio of 0.01 kg per kg dry air means that there is 10 grams of water vapour present in 1 kg of dry air. It is important to note that the warmer the air is, the more moisture it can hold and hence why the relative humidity lines curve upwards. Now that we understand these lines of the chart, let's plot the Melbourne summer design condition of 35 degrees dry bulb and 21 degrees wet bulb on the chart. From this point we can immediately see this has a relative humidity of just under 30% and a moisture content of around 10 grams per kilogram of dry air. In comparison, the much more humid Singapore design condition of 32 degrees dry bulb and 26 degrees wet bulb has a relative humidity of a bit over 60% and a moisture content of around 19 grams per kilogram of dry air. Now let's go over a basic cooling process. If we have an air on cooling coil condition of say 27 degrees dry bulb and 20 degrees wet bulb, and we want to cool the air down to a typical supplier temperature of around 12 degrees dry bulb, the air will hit the dew point line where moisture will start to condense out of the air. From here the cooling process continues down the dew point line until it gets to the required air off cooling coil temperature. Pretty easy, right? Well, remember how I said that understanding the HVAC process in some situations is important? What if we had the same air on cooling coil condition of 27 degrees dry bulb and 20 degrees wet bulb, but this time a heat load calculator states that we need a supply air temperature of 15 degrees dry bulb and 13 degrees wet bulb in order to satisfy the sensible and latent cooling loads. This might seem fine at first, but by plotting this point on the chart, we can immediately tell that the cooling process alone is not enough to achieve this supply air condition as it is situated away from the dew point line. An additional HVAC process is needed in this case. A small amount of reheat or a bypass air mixing system would do the trick. It is essential that things like this are picked up on during the design stage, as they could mean that additional HVAC equipment is required. So whenever designing a HVAC system, it might be a good idea to plot the process on a psychometric chart just to make sure it all makes sense. This particular scenario, by the way, gives me the perfect opportunity to segue to our precise control unit range. 
Air change precise control units operate on the cool and reheat principle, which makes them perfect for achieving supplier conditions that are situated away from the dew point line. If you would like to learn more about the PCU range, make sure you watch our video on it. Anyway, that's it for the first edition of The Art of the Chart. Thanks for watching and we hope you learned something useful. Stay tuned for more HVAC related videos by the Air Change Group and visit our website at airchange.com.au for more information on our products.